<laughs> All right, so tonight we are talking everything about jigging. So we are going to be given some tips and tricks and we're gonna show you how simple and effective jigging really is. It's something that a lot of people I found have uh, really overcomplicated, but it's really, really simple and it's really effective and it's how I catch a lot of my big fish. So I'm going to be using um, my live scope tonight. Um, as my weapon of choice is gonna be my R-Type, my medium light jigging rod, and I have my very favorite human, Daryl Gilbert, behind the camera here this evening. And uh, we also have something fun, uh, a new way underwater camera. So we're gonna hook that up, uh, try to get some footage on there. So yeah, um, it's a little bit early right now, so we're just going to uh, start doing some scouting and see what we can see and hopefully get in some big fish. It's been a crazy good week for me, so. Alrighty, so I am hooked up. As soon as Daryl turned off the camera, I uh, hooked up onto, oh, a nice wall. I definitely, first fish of the evening. And uh, definitely a nice one. I saw it on the live scope come in. I'm fishing about 15 and a half. That was a messy netting, but we got her done. 15 and a bit, give or take feet. And uh, yeah, first fish of the evening. I'm just saying that I thought it was gonna be about 20 minutes until it got hot, but uh, hopefully this is just a quick bye catch. And this actually is the start of the evening. Beautiful walleye, first fish of the evening. Absolutely beautiful. It's a little awkward here because I'm trying to do it so so you guys can see the length, watch those spines there on the back. So, 26 and a half, absolutely beautiful. You can see the damage here on her fins from either another walleye or a muskie. And so with these big fish, you wanna give them time. I see a lot of people really rocking them back and forth. Just give them time. Because it's unnatural for water to be flowing in and out of the gills aggressively. So just give them time and they'll go back. So got a little spine to the hand. Let's try to get another one. Here comes a fish here. So when I'm jigging, you can see I'm just doing extremely, extremely subtle movements. Um, I know probably the biggest misconception is jigging is this big up and down kind of motion. And yeah, for certain baits that, you know, maybe glide or flutter, that is definitely a, a good good thing to do. But when it comes to this case, I'm just using a simple jig head and a minnow setup. And I just, um, sometimes it's called, it's called dead stick. And sometimes I like to just dead stick and keep my rod just nice and flat and, uh, and still, and sometimes those more hesitant fish will, will be more inclined to bite, so. And he's coming back. And I got him. Oh, and I lost him, of course. Oh, I, that down. I didn't get a good enough hook set. I get camera shot, that's my problem. Okay, so, drop it right back down. That fish came in pretty aggressively, so hopefully, Sassy enough for round two. I stung him very good though. So I, there's a fish coming into my bait very fast and aggressively. Oh, missed it, turned around. Didn't take it, not interested. Absolutely crazy how you can see the behavior of, this, of the fish on the live scope. That to me is the game changer because or on traditional sonar, you can kind of see them chasing it up and down, but that's kind of really all you get here. You can see if they're swiping it, if they're missing it, what the heck's going on. So it's in live time. So here comes a fish along the bottom here. Let's see if he's going to cooperate with us here. All right, so here he comes off the bottom. He's sniffing me. Very picky this evening. I'm just gonna dead stick it, so AK hold it nice and steady. Raise it up a bit, see if he wants it. Here comes another one, maybe that'll pressure this one to bite. Yeah. Reel it up a bit. 
See how these fish, they're just coming in, kind of swiped and he's coming back now. I'm just gonna switch my grip here for my optimum hook set. There's one on the left there. See these fish are just kind of so picky right now. And like I said, I'd be sitting here jigging before I had this, I'd be thinking really, you know, my live scope so chef at camp had a genius idea why not use a broken trolling motor tilt tiller with my tilt tiller and uh it's been fantastic it's been the best idea of the summer so far and i got it this time and it is another nice walleye. Looks like it might be mid 20, so I'm just gonna come up front. Net this bad girl. Call it an A. Cool. Let's see. Just gonna grab my pliers here. Oh, thank you, camera guy. Save a minnow. Alrighty, so. 25. Absolutely. So this is the uh, average size walleye here at Slippery Winds, and I definitely am not complaining about it. So that's that. I'm gonna go try to aim for 30 this evening. So let's see if we can do it. Four coming in. One of them's a big one, and I just hooked up. This is nice. Switch your move. Can I go on your Okay. Okay, this is a nice fish. Really, really nice fish. Oh, goodness me. This is a beautiful fish. Barely. Check this out. Absolutely gorgeous. From live scope right into my little hand. So, do a quick measurement 25. A little teeny tiny smidge. Oh, not bad whatsoever. She is back down to the depth, so that is what now? Four or five fish over 25, so we're doing pretty good this evening. We're gonna keep it going, keep this momentum going. Let's go right now. The fish on my bait right now is looking at it. Open the veil, cast my rod to the side, and 
So I know this is kind of old news, but um, never, ever, ever buy a fiber-based net. Always buy a rubber net, because then you don't get your fish tangled and you don't get your hooks tangled. And it's so much more humane. 22 in a little bit. I didn't say. I just, I'll pretend it didn't hype up, up like it's the biggest one of the night. So anyway, but yeah, rubber knots, the way to go. Things don't get caught, things don't get tangled. Humane, humane. All right, so when it comes to the most important thing, your weapon of choice, I prefer a six foot nine, six foot nine, extra fast, medium light spinning rod. I use a Rapala. <laughs> this is actually funny at this point. I use a Rapala R type, and um, I really, really like using a 10 pound performance, soft performance braid with a 8 pound fluorocarbon leader. And I like to run around a 6 to 9 foot fluorocarbon lead just so I have something that is clear between my jig and my braid. Showing towards me, I'm just gonna change my camera here. It's so cool to see the mud towards me. Oh, yeah. Oh! Took my minnow. Look at that. Oh. Just missed the wall while I was fighting it. Minimum. Got some optimism. There's a big, big one. Oh, he just met me so lightly. Nice one, all right, so for rod subs, you do not need to break the bank. I like personally using a extra fast, medium light spinning, six foot nine, grapple R type, rod and reel, 10 pound Suffolk performance braid line with about a four foot fluorocarbon lead. And that's all. And that's personally what I like to do. Like you do not need to break the bank and spend you don't even need to spend hundred dollars on a rod. Okay, cool. Good measurement. 23, not bad. Woo! Not very graceful, but it's a awesome. Not bad. All right, hooked up. Sorry, we had a bit of a battery, battery issue here. Hooked up on another next one. Okay. Let's see. I guess this one is around 24. Or 24. 24 and a half. I just got some chance. Okay. 22 and a half. Alright, what did I say? 20, 24? 25. On the nose. Over time. 25, I just cut myself an inch short. Let me try. Okie dokie. Nice 25 inch walleye here at Slippery Winds. Every single fish I've caught in the smallest has been 22 this evening. Good. All right. So I am hooked up on a really nice walleye here. Wee. Oh, man, that's a nice one. Let me open my bail. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Actually, it's not as big as I thought, but it's still nice. Unhooked itself. I love when that happens. Very nice of, very nice of her. Okay. 26. 
nose on the bumper. Well, 25.99. Here we go. Nice fish. Ooh, this is a heavy one. I got something in it. All right, it's just starting to get dark here. And this is around the time when I love to fish because we just switch from those shoreline sized fish. Well, we weren't cutting shoreline before, but Ooh, not really. We just switch from those. Smaller fish you can get into this bigger size box. Beautiful. Let's see what we have here. Oh, you got the pliers, folks, because they have sharp teeth. Check that out. Absolutely beautiful fish. Let's get a quick measurement. 25 on the nose, nice and fat. Beautiful, this is the average size fish that you'll catch here at Slippery Winds. Absolutely beautiful, this is the average size while you'll catch at Slippery Winds and you'll play. So you're definitely guaranteed, if you come out and see us, you're definitely guaranteed a trophy walleye. Let's see here. Hooked up. Okay, another nice fish. I don't think it's as big as the other one here, but it definitely, uh, definitely is. Nice. And I know my drag is tight, but when you're catching so many fish in an evening, you kind of uh, kind of tend to tighten the drag up. That's okay. Oh, my minnow's still on here. That is the ultimate win. I'm just gonna set that to the side. You can't beat it. Like, you absolutely cannot beat it. So let's see. This is getting this use. And just a hair over 25. Not bad. This is a amazing, amazing average here. And you'll play it slippery wins. Let's be nice. Graceful release this time. Ooh. Perfect! That's it! Oh my goodness! Okay, I'm starting to get amped. I love when it starts to get dark. So that is a wrap for tonight's walleye jigging session. It's around 5 after 10. We're both really tired. Go to work again tomorrow. And uh, yeah, living the dream. So thanks, Daryl, for filming this tonight. And uh, hopefully, you learned something and you enjoyed. Let's give her.